The hour has come, my friends. The call has gone out. This is the worship ministry of new beginnings. Come and see. Good morning, New Beginnings family. My name is Pastor Neil Platon, and I welcome you to New Beginnings Worship. We hope you find what you seek in this time of worship. As we gather our hearts today, reflect on these words. Quiet your hearts, beloved of God, for God is with us and is speaking to us. Rest your spirits on God, for God will surround you with peace. Open your lives to the power of God and presence, and do not be afraid, for God is with us and now and for all time. To this end, let us worship God. Good morning. This is our day of new beginnings. I'm Don Leifer, your worship leader for this morning. Let us lift our voices from wherever we are for our call to worship. Come, let us praise the Lord. We praise God with our whole heart. God's works are great. Open our hearts and spirits to see your works, O Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord who has saved us. May our lives reflect the wondrous love of God that all may see and know of God's greatness. Amen. Softly and tenderly, we offer our gathered prayer this morning with these words. Open our hearts and spirits this day to hear the great good news of your power and presence with all your people. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in song and story. Enliven us and remind us that you are with us through the pillar of fire, through the magnificent words of the prophets, through the ministry and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi. 
and welcome to today's Trojan Moment. One of my close friends is learning to become a carpenter, and a carpenter is a person who makes and repairs things using wood. And he's made a lot of things like tables, chairs, cabinets, and things like that. But he's also made small interesting things like this. And I actually have three of them in different sizes. And he actually went to classes, he read books, he went online all to learn how to become a carpenter. And that's one of the sources that people use when we want to learn things or know things is by reading books, going to classes, and going online and things like that. And we know we can rely on these things, is these sources, because the people who wrote it or teaches it have been given the knowledge and ability to do so. You know, they might have went to school for a really long time to get a degree and be able to teach or actually learn these things. Other sources that we look to for direction is from people in our lives like your parents, teachers, even your pastor. Now, there was, a evil, there was a man who had an evil spirit within him. And the man, he didn't know who Jesus was at first. But the evil spirit, when he saw, when the man looked at Jesus, the evil spirit immediately recognized Jesus and he knew what he was capable of. And the spirit, you know, he cried out to Jesus asking him what he was going to do. And Jesus told it to be quiet and made the evil spirit leave the man. And the people, they were so amazed and they realized that Jesus had true authority. And they saw that what he was teaching and was true and that he even had control over evil and darkness. So what do we take from all this? Well, we know that Jesus has strength and authority. We know that his words are true and that they are reliable and that his authority comes from God. And his words is right here, right in the Bible. And this is our source of information. It's the biggest source of information for your pastors as well, because it holds the true words of God. And Jesus has the power and authority, and we know we can trust what he says. Pray to him knowing he cares, loves, and hears us. Rely on him and you will have the confidence that he will provide. And listen to him and know that he's in control. And that's the good news for today. New Beginnings Family as we are now on the final Sunday of the month, we'd like to extend our greetings to our celebrants for both birthdays and anniversaries. For birthdays, we have Janice Sembrano, Robert Willett, Jillian DeMagno, Angeli Sequeira, Bruce Moore, Lomi Perez, Chris Chatterton, Denise and Laura Whistler, Jamie Mena, Katrina Torturo, Susan Cargill, Judy McGowan, Matthew Bingham, Pastor Tevita Tukunga, Leanne Maluth, Marilyn Friedrich, Jobelina Gigi Tamayo, John Cotter, and Heidi Larson. And for anniversaries, we have Nestor and Evangeline Regindi. To all of you, blessings and best wishes from your New Beginnings family. Let us now prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing Near to the Heart of God.
loving God, we are your people chosen by you. As we meet together in this virtual space, help us to listen, to understand, and to remember. Make us aware that we are meeting not simply with one another, but with you. Let your presence be real to each of us at this moment. Lord, as we pray, may it be just like speaking with you. As we listen, help us so to concentrate so that we really hear your word and help us to take in and retain all that we hear, hear and see and experience this morning. Hear now, O oh God, our prayers, our confessions of those things we have done. Hear our confessions of those things which we ought not to have done. Now hear our confessions of what we could or should have done in a different way to better reflect who you are in us. Hear now also, Lord, our praise and thanksgiving for your continuing blessings and unearned grace given to each and every one of us. For we ask all of this in the name of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and who taught us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is a place of full release near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace near to the This morning's scripture is from Mark, Mark 1, 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority, not as scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this, a, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And as Mark would say, at once 
his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. For me, for you, for all of us, to reach, to teach, to preach, these are the words from God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow your hearts with me as we come to God in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be made acceptable in thy sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. Believe it or not, Jesus has a message. Jesus is an individual, not with just words to fill an hour 
but with a message that can make the difference between life and death. A message that has the power to heal and make us whole. This is how the Gospel of Mark presents Jesus at the beginning of his ministry. I can remember several years ago, I was present for the launching of a political campaign for a Filipino American friend running for mayor in the city of Carson. On the day of his official announcement, he spoke at the school to articulate his position on education. He spoke at a factory to talk about jobs and the economy. The point he was making was that he was embarking on an important campaign and where he chose to speak was an important as what he had to say. According to Mark, Jesus chose a special place from which to speak. Jesus went to the synagogue where the people of God came to hear God's word for their lives. There was a lot of talking, of course, in the synagogue, but when Jesus spoke, something was different. The Bible says he spoke as one having authority. I mean, there is something powerful about people who speak with authority. Those messages, rather, is as much in their heart as it is in their mind. There was once a story of two men who recited the 23rd Psalm. One was a well-known actor, while the other one was an old and rather unsophisticated minister. The actor's rendering of the psalm was beautiful and commanding. Everyone enjoyed hearing the rich words of the beloved psalm spoken in his clear baritone. All the inflections and pauses were perfect. When it was time for the old minister, he stumbled a bit and the words were broken with unnatural punctuations of silence. But when he finished, there were tears in the eyes of the listeners. Something had happened, and it was the actor who gave the interpretation. I know the psalm, he said, but this man knows the shepherd. That is the difference authority makes. Have you ever noticed how when someone speaks with authority, there will be those who hear and rejoice, and there will be those who want to resist what is being said. There are always those who are invested in hearing the same old message, no matter how tired it becomes, rather than listening to something new and daring and challenging. Jesus speaking with authority creates a crisis. In today's text, the man with the unclean spirit cries out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Such is the threat of a new word that invites us to live in a different way. I wonder if this ancient scene is not lived out in the church again and again. Jesus came to a world that was immersed in religion, but it is, or it was a very tired religion. It was a religion that had everything completely under control and that offered a God who did things exactly as they wanted them done. There was no mystery, no surprises, and no conversation. Confronted with, with Jesus, they felt torment. Don't destroy us, Jesus. 
they seemed to cry out. When Christ comes to us, the doors of life are flung open to wonder and amazement. When you meet Jesus, you know that great chunks of life exist that cannot be wrapped snugly inside a blanket of rational explanation. It is easy to feel disoriented by Jesus' strange ethics, Jesus' way of including everyone, Jesus' dislike of organized religion and the like. We do not have a clinical name for the condition of the man healed by Jesus that day in the synagogue. All we know is that the man was indeed healed and the people were amazed, and it was all so long ago. But this text suggests that there may be times when, like the ancient man in today's story, we too are in the grip of an evil spirit, a spirit that robs life of its joy and reduces everything to rational explanation a spirit that keeps everything under control, tied down, neat, and safe. Today, I believe the gospel invites us to be healed by the authority of God. It takes the authority of God to keep our minds open, to wonder, to be ready for the tug of God's spirit on our spirits. It takes radical healing to be open to the grace of a new day or to feel your knees quiver at the sight of a mother loving her child or have your mind confounded by the grace of forgiveness. The authority of God commands us to imagine a new world. This imagination is so needed. Like the ancient people in today's scripture lesson, we are tired of the same old ways of thinking and being. It is kind of like our situation. The reason why we thought about coming together as new beginnings from amongst seven churches is because we are tired of the same old, same old ways of doing church, that we want a new and excellent way. You see, we have had the words with us so long that they have gone flat in our souls and in our lives. Love your neighbor, care for the least, show mercy to all. We know this language or the cliches well enough, but Something is missing. Something is lacking between the words and the deeds. We need the authority of God to set us free to begin the exciting and dangerous work of imagining a new way of being church. Perhaps it would be better to say that we need the authority of God to free us to use our imaginations in a new way. It takes imagination to create weapons of destruction and it takes imagination to create communities that are dispensers of God's healing and grace. It takes imagination to rob people of their dignity through corrupt systems and it takes imagination to offer everyone the opportunity to live as a child of God. The question is, Will we submit our imaginations to the authority of God? Jesus taught them as one having authority. How was that different from the scribes and the religious leaders? I mean, in this, the scribes would teach by quoting Rabbi so-and-so and how he got that from Rabbi such-and-such. -and, -such. and if you compare that to Rabbi that fella, you know, you get the idea. The scribes and the rabbis would quote each other and things got kind of detached from the original word of God. 
Furthermore, their teaching itself got away from the word of God in its content and meaning and purpose. For example, the Sabbath commandment gradually drifted away from God's purpose for it and got changed into a manageable outward observance that people could do and look good, thereby man-made rules about how many steps you could take on the Sabbath day's journey and the like. Jesus' teaching was so much different. He spoke with authority. He didn't have to quote this rabbi or that rabbi. He went straight to the source, and that is the word of God. And he cut through all of the technicalities that had gloomed on and obscured the original intent of the Holy Scriptures. In his teaching, Jesus would say things like, you have heard that it was said, but I say unto you that speaking with authority, Jesus got right to the heart of the matter. He expounded the law of God according to God's purpose and intent. Jesus spoke and taught with authority. And it was astonishing. Now, why is Jesus' authority in teaching important to you and to me? Well, two reasons come to mind right away. One is that you can trust what the Lord says. And number two, Jesus' teaching will lead you to salvation. So again, I ask you, are you willing to give everything to God, all that we are and all that we have, and submit that unto God's throne of grace. And of course, at times, our answer is no, well, not willingly. You know, we don't like anyone having authority, exercising that authority over us. And to a degree, that's understandable. We don't like anyone telling us what to do. I mean, you're not the boss of me, we would say. And then there will be resistance. Someone will cry out, don't torment us, but be of good cheer. We will follow the one whose authority is such that it cannot be silence. And undergirded by that authority, we are invited, you and me, to go forth and Engage the work of creating a new day, of new beginnings, if I can say, a new world. It is the most exciting work any of us could ever be asked to be about and a part of. And it all begins today. In this very space, before the authority of these wonderful words from the Gospel of Mark, May we listen. May we put it to heart. May it be so as we continue with our life together and with God. Amen. In the 1964 United Methodist hymnal, there was a hymn, Once to Every Man and Nation. It was not carried over to our current hymnal. The words, I think, are absolutely important to hear today. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide with the strife of truth or falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, God's new Messiah, offering each the bloom or blight, and the choice goes by forever twixt that darkness and that light. Then decide with truth is noble when we share her wretched crust, ere her cause bring fame and profit, and is prosperous to be just. Then it is the brave man chooses, but the coward stands aside, till the multitude make virtue of the faith they had denied. 
by the light of burning martyrs, Jesus' bleeding feet I track, toiling up new Calvaries ever with the cross that turns not back. New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. We must upward still and onward who would keep abreast of truth. Though the cause of evil prosper, yet tis truth alone is strong. Though her portion be the scaffold, and upon the throne be wrong, yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow keeping watch above his own. New Beginnings family, we hope that you have been receiving our church updates. If you haven't, please let us know. Email us at newbeginnings.mbie at gmail.com or call us at 909-515-5770. With high COVID numbers, we're still limiting access to all of our campuses. If you need to be in any of our campuses, you can contact Gail. Her email is g at dot mbie at gmail.com. We continue to have our weekly Zoom studies. Don Leifer leads us on Tuesday evenings with What's in Your Hymnal and Yours Truly on Friday evenings. Both are at 7 o'clock. Please check out our website or email blast for more information. Friends, the season of Lent is coming fast, and so the church is offering a Lenten study. And so if you're interested, please call the church office, 909-515-5770. And let us know if the days work for you for um, Tuesday mornings at 11 or on Friday evenings at 7 o'clock. If these days won't work for you, please let us know and we'll be more than happy to schedule another one to accommodate your schedule. Today, my dear friends, is the last day for our Heifer Project campaign in honor of the late Reverend Harry Ulmer. We would like to thank all of you for your support to this cause. So far, we have collected $2,610. And so if you still would like to donate, you can do so by going on our website, nbie.org, and go on the giving tab. Also, um, we still have copies of the upper room for January and February. If you would like to receive a copy of this devotional, call the church office and I'll be more than happy to deliver this to you. Right after worship, we will be having our Zoom fellowship hour as we connect with each other and check in with each other. So check out our chat, website, or email blast for the link to our Zoom fellowship following our worship time together. We thank each and every one of you for your continued support to New Beginnings. If you would like to give financially to the church, you can do so by writing a check payable to New Beginnings in Methodist Church and mail it to our downtown campus. You can also go on our website, nbie.org, and by clicking on the giving tab. You can also give through text. Here is now a short video on how to text to give.
Again, we thank each and every, and every one of you for your support to New Beginnings Church, and may God continue to bless us all. comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. My dear friends, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. 
Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you both now and forevermore. Go in peace, my dear friends, and until we meet again, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.